What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love During Lockup, Season 4, Episode 23. So we have um, some more shenanigans with Love During Lockup. Um, I remember watching Love During Lockup earlier this year, I think. I don't know if it was like a full season or what the hell was going on there, but... Um, I remember watching Love During Lockup with that girl, Tay, who had her vision board of all the prisoners that she was dating so she can keep track of who everybody was and how much time they were serving and when they were getting out. She was dating multiple prisoners at the same time. She was dating some prisoner named Hottie. Then she got into a like a full on fist fight with another chick named Boston over Hottie. So... Uh, Tay is back y'all she is back so she's back again Tay is 39 years old and she is a mortician she only dates inmates now that's a whole psychology there because I wish somebody could dig into her brain and get to the root of the problem and find out why does this woman only prefer to date inmates and I know it has a lot to do with um, herself more so than uh, wanting uh, to be with someone who can give all of their attention to her and her only. She probably has some mad insecurity problems. She probably has a lot of um, self-esteem issues as well, because this just doesn't make any sense that you only date men who are inmates. And it makes me wonder. So when they're about to be released, I guess she's about to break up with them uh, before they're released because she doesn't want to date anybody from the outside. I don't understand. So Tay is back. Um, <laughs> we see her vision board okay her vision board is still there I don't know how many people she's dating she's dating like five or six inmates right um she got into that fight with Boston over Hottie and so she had broken up with Hottie she says that she's trying to move on from Hottie, but it's so hard because they have so much history together. Hottie is still reaching out to her, writing her letters upon letters. When we see Tay, she's at her place of employment, her place of business. Um, I guess they were getting things ready for a funeral because there was an actual body in a casket that she was applying makeup on. And I guess they took a break from that, from dealing with the dead body. And, um, she brought some letters that Hottie had written to her from prison. And so her friend or her coworker re read one of the letters because Tay says that she cannot even bring herself to read any of his letters because she's so upset with him. So she reads one of, uh, the friend or the coworker reads one of Hottie's letters out loud his one of his love letters, reads them out loud to Tay. And I guess it just melts her heart. And, um, she has reconsidered, her relationship with Tay because the next time that we see her she's at her house and Kiyoka comes over now Kiyoka is Hottie's cousin so Kiyoka comes over and she comes bearing gifts from Hottie so Hottie has gifted Tay a hoodie with um, his picture like spray painted you know how they do the this was like back in the 90s I don't even know they still did this but you know like the spray paint pictures that they used to do back in the 90s on the cars on the walls on um, t-shirts and stuff so it's like a spray painted picture of Hottie on the front but the kicker is is that Boston Tay's rival over Hottie she she had been having a hottie uh, a hottie hoodie from you know from whenever so she was the first to have a hottie hoodie so not only did hottie gift her his hoodie he also gifted her a ring because hottie wants to propose to tay and he's going to propose to her from prison via speakerphone so this just absolutely melts Tay's heart. So her and Hottie are back together again. Um, she's forgotten the fist fight that she got over, that she uh, got into with Boston. She's forgotten how Hottie has been cheating on her probably since day one. All of that is forgotten and forgiven. So she tells Hottie over the phone that he better be on his knee when he's proposing to her. And he said he sure is. So we just have to envision Hottie in um, the common area or the phone area of the prison that he's in. And I can just imagine him being on the phone with the line of other inmates waiting to use the phone. And this fool gets down on one knee to propose um, to Tay. 
So she says yes. And um, she puts on the ring. And while she's glowing in the aftermath of becoming Hottie's fiance, her phone rings again. And so she quickly gets up and goes all the way outside because she doesn't want Hottie's cousin to overhear her conversation. Because who should be calling Tay but her other prison boo named Bibi. So she says that she cannot let BB go. So she gets on the phone with BB. They have a conversation. And while her and BB are talking, um, her phone, like another call is trying to come through. So after she's done talking to BB, reassuring BB that things are still good between them, you know, she loves him and he loves her and they can't wait to see each other while she's wearing Hottie's engagement ring on her finger. She clicks over and she's talking to um, the, a couple of friends these two people who are friends with yet another inmate. So she wants these two people who are her friends. I don't know who these people are, but she wants these two people to hook her up with this other inmate. So they told her that they're working on it. They are definitely working on it. And she will definitely be getting a call from this other inmate. So she thinks that she is just, you know, so clever. And she thinks that um, she's got so much game that she's, you know, playing all these prisoners. She's got all these prisoners thinking that uh, they're her one and only. Well, little does she know that Kayoka... Kiyoka's business is not over. Kiyoka, in fact, has to make another stop for her cousin Hottie because Hottie plans to propose to Tay's arch rival, Boston. So Kiyoka is on her way to see Boston and to also let Boston know that Hottie wants to propose to her because Hottie said that just in case things don't work out with Tay, he's got plan B lined up. Plan B being Boston absolutely nuts you cannot take this show seriously you cannot take this damn show seriously at all let's move on to justine and michael justine is 35 michael is also 35 justine is a medication technician what the hell is that do you remember the days when someone would say what they did for a living and you knew exactly what it was? Now they have all of these weird names for just regular schmegler jobs and you can't figure out what anybody does anymore. Um, she's also an entrepreneur. She probably um, either sells lashes, sells hair, sells waist trainers, sells tea, sells... Um, wigs or something so justine has a 17 year old daughter and she also has two other sons she is divorced from the father of her two boys she's getting married when we meet justine she's actually in a bridal shop because she's getting married to her inmate boyfriend michael the very next day okay the very next day so she's in the bridal shop looking for a gown and she has to find something prison appropriate <laughs> OK, it can't show too much skin. It can't be too tight. It can't be this. It can't be that. It has to follow prison regulations. So she's trying to find a plain Jane ugly wedding gown to wear for her uh, prison wedding that's coming up the next day. So the ladies that work there asked her, well, what is he going to be wearing? And he, she said he's going to be wearing, a, I guess it's prison jumpsuit or a white jumpsuit. And I thought to myself, girl, why are you even spending money on a wedding gown? Number one. Just go there and just wear whatever, whatever you already have in your closet. It'll be fine. Why would you spend money on a wedding gown for a prison wedding? And number two, he's supposedly coming out in 61 days. So her mother, who's also there with her, asked her, why don't you just wait until he comes out and get married then? And she says, well, he just we, we got our approval from the prison uh, that our wedding can take place now. So we're doing it now. Girl... <laughs> Okay, we know what the real reason is. The real reason is she's worried that if she waits until he actually comes out, he's not going to marry her. So as long as he's locked up, she has a better chance of him going through with the wedding. Anywho, so... I don't know if I mentioned this, but Michael is in prison for possession with the intent to deliver. Um, I don't know exactly how much time he got in total, but he's coming out in about two months. And the mother is really worried. The mother is not supportive of this relationship at all. Her 17 year old daughter, though, is because while she was in the bridal shop, uh, Michael, the inmate, called her and um, the daughter was like, hi, Michael, I can't wait to see you. <laughs> 
Anywho, so the mother's not supportive of this relationship at all because of his past. And she's worried that when he comes out, he might go back to his old criminal ways. And, you know, it might put her daughter and her grandchildren in danger if he goes back to selling drugs. Well, Justine tries to convince her mother that, no, he's not going to go back to selling drugs. Even the 17 year old daughter was like, he would never do that again. Oh, how naive you are, little child. How naive you are. So when he comes out, he plans to get right back into the rap game because Michael aka Montana Mills is also a rapper he's an aspiring rap artist so his options are either being a rapper or selling drugs which one do you think is going to make him the most mon- the most money in the quickest way so he himself, Michael, the inmate, he has four children. And so Justine is going to be visiting his four children, his mother and his sister, but they don't even know. They don't even know that Justine and Michael are planning to get married. So the next day or whatever day it is, yeah, the next day she goes to see the children, the mother and the sister of her fiance. Um, he has four kids four kids and not one job. Everybody was really excited to see her because, you know, they've been together for three years. And so his family is very familiar with her. So they're all happy to see her. All the children seem to be very close to her and comfortable with her. The mother was excited to see her. The sister was happy to see her as well. But the sister um, was a lot more reserved. Um, The sister, I guess, is very protective of her brother. And um, she wants to know and she wants to make sure that they're in this for the right reasons. The sister tells Justine, that she actually needs to see them together. She has, actually needs to see her brother and Justine with one another, interacting with one another for her to make up her mind on whether or not she's going to support this relationship. The mother said that her son, Michael, was a player back in the day. So already red flags are popping up everywhere. So he was a player, I guess, before he became incarcerated. And he's going to come out of prison. And by the time he comes out, he's already going to be a married man. And it just, if we're going to take this stuff seriously, because that's what I have to do to give a proper review of the show. If you're going to take this stuff seriously, Justine is going, she already knows that he used to be a player. So she's going to hurry up and marry him before he comes out so that he doesn't get cold feet after he comes out. But then she's going to expect him to be completely faithful and to be a hardworking rapper and to come home every night and to be there for her and her three kids, as well as his own four kids, seven kids between the two of them and everything. And they're just going to live happily ever after. Right. And we're going to be there to witness it all. So the sister's kind of like, I don't know about this. I have to see it to believe it, to support this, to see if it's going to work out. I'm really not sure. Uh, But Justine reassures her that she is definitely there for the right reasons. And um, it's all going to be fine. Moving on to Melissa and Louie. Melissa is a mail carrier. Louie um, is in prison for armed robbery. He has 200 days left in his sentence. And his, uh, his sentence, his total sentence was nine and a half years. So he's been in there for nine and a half years for armed robbery. He robbed a liquor store with a butcher knife. He says that he was going through heavy, heavy withdrawals at the time that he committed his crime. So drugs definitely played into, uh, played a factor into him landing in prison for nine and a half years. There are murder sentences that are less than that. Nine and a half years he's been in there. They met when they were in high school. Uh, They reconnected seven months prior through Facebook. Um, She goes out with two of her friends and her friends obviously are not supporting this. I think this is absolutely crazy. They don't want her to go through with this, but she says this is love. They're in love. He even says that he's very much in love with her. When we meet her, she has on a cheerleader outfit and they're FaceTiming each other. And so she does this little weak cheerleading routine and then she proceeds to strip down to her bra and underwear. And that's how they finish off their conversation. That's Melissa and Louie. Moving on to Chelsea and Mikey. Chelsea is 39 years up. 
39 years old. She is a housekeeper and she's also deaf. Mikey is 32 years old. He's in prison for criminal mischief and receiving stolen property. They met through his sister. Um, Mikey, when he saw a picture of her, he was immediately attracted to her. Her being deaf is not a problem for him. In fact, she's been teaching him sign language. Melissa, I mean, excuse me, Chelsea tells us that usually, um, when she dates someone, um, they're interested in learning sign language for about a month before they give up, but he's been going at it for an entire year. Could it be because he's locked up and has nothing else to do but to learn sign language? So when we see Mikey, this guy is humongous. He's like the rock size big. I mean, just muscles for days. He is huge. So she was immediately attracted to him. He says he was immediately attracted to her. When we meet her, she's out bowling with her kid and some friends. And um, I guess it was her, I don't know if it was her friend or her sister, uh, but I guess it was her friend. I don't know. Her friend was asking her a whole bunch of questions about this relationship. Um, the friend was asking her, are you saying? Sending him money. She claims that she only did it one time, but I think it's been more than that. I think either she revealed in her confessional or Mikey told us that she has been sending him money and it's been more than once. She's a housekeeper. Her income is very limited, but here we are. She has a son, I think uh, a 10 year old son. And, um, the friend is really worried that Chelsea is going to be taken advantage of because usually the men in her life take advantage of her. I don't know if she's just one of those women that men take advantage of or if it's because of the fact that she's deaf. But um, she seems to be very, she, she has a very strong personality. She looks like somebody who can take care of herself, but we'll see how this all plays out. The friend asked her, um, is he an addict? And she says, no, 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 no. And the friend says, because normally people who are in prison and who've been in prison for theft, um, it's because they're trying to support a drug habit. Chelsea convinces her or insists that he is not a drug addict, that drugs had played no part in him landing in prison. But we shall see. Moving on to Emily, 39, and I, for, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Dari, 26. So Emily, she's a criminal data researcher. Dari, he's in, um, he's doing a three and a half year stint for robbery. Her goal is to become a criminal defense attorney. Currently, she's pursuing a master's in criminal justice. He initially thought she was a catfish. Because I guess that initial picture that she sent him, he said she was so pretty. I thought she was a catfish. She's not. So she's when we meet her, she's with a friend in a jewelry store. She says she's there to upgrade her ring. So supposedly uh, Dowry had given her a ring. I don't know. I guess they're engaged. He had given her a ring. But because she caught him cheating, she caught her prison boyfriend cheating on her so she wants to upgrade her ring she has access to all of his money in prison because of um because of um she's his power of attorney he signed over he gave her power of attorney so she has access to everything and so she's just gonna you know dip into his account take out a couple of thousand and pay for this new ring i have no idea if he's aware of this or not when she called him cheating, she explained how that happened. I don't remember exactly what she said. Something about a prison phone call that it was already in Spanish. Um, the recording was in Spanish and she doesn't speak Spanish. So that's how she figured that he had been calling somebody else. And when he got on the phone, he called her by another chick's name. And that's how she found out that he was talking to another female. His defense is that he met this other girl who was giving him a lot of money uh, to play like he was her boyfriend or to be her boyfriend or to talk to her or some nonsense like that. Girl, you let a man in prison cheat on you. She comes across as someone who's like, she thinks she's really hip. She thinks that she's really savvy, that no one could take advantage of her because she says, you know, he's scamming me, but I'm scamming him even more, you know? So she wants to portray like she's so street smart, you know, no prisoner can take advantage of her. No prisoner can scam her because she's the one really scamming him and that she's only with him for the money. We shall see. We shall see. So why did it bother you that he was talking to another girl? If you're only in it for the money and you're just here to scam him. <laughs> anyways 
that is my review of 90 day what is this not even 90 day Lo love after lockup or love during lockup y'all i can't even get these tv shows straight love during lockup that is my review thank you so much i'm gonna stick with it because this is just for entertainment purposes only on your way out don't forget to rate the video if you like this content go ahead and subscribe and i will definitely talk to you later thank you so much bye